Hello, MCM London, how are you this morning? No, that's not good enough. How are you this morning, London? We're there, we're there. So we're joined on stage by Howard Charles from the Musketeers. He plays Porthos. Um, how are you, Howard? Wonderful, thank you, sir. Wonderful, wonderful. Have you seen any Musketeer cosplayers around at the moment, or have you... Any Musketeers? Any, like cosplay, like anyone dressed up as the Musketeers? Uh, I haven't yet, which is a big disappointment, so... Come if on, you're guys. here, make yourself known. <laughs> Come to the bus stage Indeed. and present yourself to Howard. Indeed, it, immediately. <laughs> so yeah. I've, I've read um, that you are a ca classically trained actor. You've been in a load of Shakespearean That's right, plays. That's right, yeah. Um, the Twelfth Night, um, Macbeth, uh, Measure for Measure, The Merchant of Venice. Yeah, um, and most recently King John, yeah. Oh, wow. What part did you play in King John? Uh, Philip the Bastard, typecast really, so uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> 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 so do you miss the theater at, at all uh yes and no um with theater and and, and film slash tv yeah they're very different mediums uh with different disciplines and um you know essentially the work is the same but the the arena changes yeah so um i enjoy both uh but the most important thing really is to just be challenged i think um yeah. that's the only way you become better and and really most of the time it's the only way that i care <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm not interested in doing things that are too easy. Oh, so you like a chat? You love? You relish a challenge? In I a think sense. it's important, you know, yeah. for our own evolution. If you look at us as human beings, you know, um, Homo sapiens as a race, the only way that we've actually evolved to the level that we're uh, of where we are now, yeah, is through trial and tribulation and hardship, you know, and and having to. How the hell do I do this? How do I work out this problem? You know. How do I eat hot food? Oh, I've got to make something called fire, you know, all yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's like, that's the only way. And, um, you know, I was literally having a conversation with my partner this morning. And <laughs> I found myself saying, do you not think it's unusual how electricity works? <laughs> Just randomly said that. So I was like, we plug something into a wall and it works. Of course, yeah. you know, we all understand how it works. But do we really understand how it works? I don't understand the full mechanics of it. I'm just glad it happens, you know. But, um... But yeah, so uh, I'm always interested in, uh, you know, all the little things. <laughs> I see this, lo this woman laughing here, but it's true. <laughs> you know, it's, I think it's important to, to be thankful, to be appreciative, even, even if you don't necessarily understand uh, the kind of mechanics of something. So you like your creature comforts? Are you a creature comfort guy? Do you like your creature comforts? Uh, I, I, no, I mean, I'm sure there are, like, like us all, I have these little things which I prefer, but... I think for me it's kind of the opposite yeah. most of the time where I like to be slightly uncomfortable. Okay. Um, yeah. Particularly when I'm working because I just feel like then it kind of get it kind of gets the best out of me, you know. Yeah. Um, in life as well as art, of course. But um, but yeah, when the hard work's done, yeah, probably my biggest uh, I don't know little luxury comfort and stuff is I, I, I like a nice bed. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like a comfortable Who bed. Who don't love you know? their bed? Come on. It's, it's important to have a really comfortable bed, you yeah. know what I mean? It's, uh, so when you lie down, you're chilling. You're, yeah. you're fully relaxing, you know. But, but uh, yeah, some of these tempo sofas cost like two grand. So wow. easier said than done. That's it. <laughs> Earn that <Yeah>. money. <laughs> Indeed. So when you're away from the uh, theatre and doing yeah. TV work, do, do you miss the theatre? Would you? Are you one of these actors uh, that really wants to go back to the theatre? Like I was saying before, it's, it, no, it's, it's just... It, it all depends on the challenge and the part, you know, who you're working with, and so, certainly in terms of the uh, director. And so it's, um, for me, the juice has to be worth the squeeze, yeah. you know. Um, as long as that's in place, then I, I pretty much kind of do anything, yeah. any genre, any character, you know. Um, like you said before, you know, I was, I was trained, you know, yeah. classically at Drama yeah. Centre London and um we don't fuck around, you know what I mean? It's like, excuse my French, but <laughs> no, it's like, no. you know, we are, we're transformative actors and um, yeah, I'm not here just to, uh, you know, I guess, I don't know, get a little paycheck and do this. I, 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 I want to be on the list of greats. Yeah. You know, certainly well. people that I deem to be great uh, and noteworthy, something to write home about. And, um, and for me, it's, it's all about character and story. You know, I'm, I'm very much a servant yeah. of the art form rather than a, uh, an actor, you know. Yeah, you know, okay. Uh, I'll yeah, get it. I'll I'm, get it. I'm a servant of the craft. Yeah, uh, that's, that's how I see myself, and um, yeah, I'm a vessel for that connection. You know, 
I'm not particularly interesting in that regard. You know, any character I play is far more interesting than I am. Really? Uh, well, no one's written anything called Howard Charles or, no, not, you know no, what I mean? It's like, yeah. I, I played Porthos in The Musketeers, for example, you know. Porthos is a beast, <laughs> Yeah. you know, uh, much more than I am in, in some <laughs> regard. And so uh, if I get to lend myself to that, then, oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more. That's it. You know, yeah. Have you kind of got a play or kind of a, a bit of theatre that you would love to do? Have you got your eye on, say, a project that's coming up that you were like, right, I really fancy uh, that? Theatre, no. Um, I've, I've just moved to Los Angeles. Uh, so um, I'm living out there now. Um, I flew in a couple of days ago just to kind of be here with you guys. So how you doing? And, um, but yeah, so the opportunity over there is, 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 is vast yeah. uh, in comparison to here, unfortunately. But, you know... You go where the land is most fertile. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. You go where the land is most fertile, um, and so that's what I've done. And um, but with theatre, there's you know I've, I've got some ambitions, and you know there are some challenges out there which I'd like to uh, take on. But um, if, if I had my pick right now, I'd say yeah. that I'd like to play Iago uh, yeah. in the play Othello, Shakespeare. Um, I've got a great concept um, in my mind for that play. Yeah and me playing Yago, which I've shared with a couple of uh, directors who've, uh, who've certainly warmed to it, but right now just, you know, it's not about saying, I want to play that part, because if, if I play Yago, you've got to have someone who can play Othello yeah. well, yeah. Um, and Desdemona well, you know, not just getting people in the roles, but people that can actually bring something to the table. Um, yeah, it, it's a, for me, it's about more than how many bums you put on seats. seats it's yeah. about, uh, it's about, The word I'm thinking of is intention. Yeah. You know, you will be judged. So how good are you? You know, yeah. are you going to throw something at me that I can use and then throw back? And yeah. we start that kind of process of, you know, back and forth, you know, at the level of character. Yeah. That's what excites me. You know, if it's just because you're famous, it's all right. Nice. But it's about intention. I think that's what people here value, too. I mean, everyone listening, you know, it's like. We're all here right now in whatever capacity you are here to celebrate something or other. Yeah, that's it. You know, um, you, you connect with a, a TV show or a film or a character or whatever it is because it resonates with you. You know, it's not simply because a certain person is playing that role. And sometimes maybe it is, you know, yeah. um, and if it is, cool. But I think for me, for my own, you know, my own judgment, my own preference, uh, it's what people bring to that that makes that, whatever that may be, great. Yeah, definitely, um, you know, definitely. Yeah. So, like you said, you played Porthos in yeah. the market. What, what attracted you to that role? Uh, well, he looked a lot like me. Um, <laughs> uh, Always a good start. <laughs> Always a no, great start. You know what it was? When I read it, I just thought, yeah, this is a different take on, on, on the character. You know, it yeah. wasn't just a kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> no disrespect, but like a fat, drunk guy, you know, kind of thing. And I thought, <laughs> I like this, you know. And yeah. I, I had an opportunity to, to work with the writer um, to, to really flesh out that character and, and make him a warrior, you know, a lion heart, yeah. um, as opposed to just someone on the side. Um, didn't always work out that way, of course, because they, they, they wrote me out a lot of it, but yeah. there you go. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I wish I would have had more of an opportunity to really flesh it out, but there, was a lot, there were rather a lot of people to serve on that show. Um, it is what it is, you know, it's part and parcel of, you know, British television and, you know, episodic television, you know, it's cool. It comes to the territory, but um, it doesn't take away from the fact that I learned a hell of a lot playing yeah. that character. Yeah. Uh, I love the character and the show and the people that worked on it. And um, we had a great time. It's just, I'm one of those people that always wants more. And that's, yeah. I always want to be deeper, closer to the character. Yeah. You know, give you guys more. I just, uh, yeah, I'm not really, I mean, my partner's here and she can testify to the fact that I'm not very good at just uh, settling for a certain level. I, okay. <laughs> even if it's at the top level, I still want to go <laughs> another one, you know? So, um, yeah. Mm. So would you say you're kind of like borderline method actor or would you say you are a method actor? In some senses. I think it's interesting. I'm in a transitional period of my life and uh, 18 months ago, I probably would have said, I don't like labels, um, so I don't want to call myself a method actor. But okay. you know what? I was trained at the last methodological school in the country. And yes, that's certainly the way that I go about my business. Uh, as the great Robert De Niro once said, it doesn't matter how you get there in terms yeah. of process, as long as you get there. Yeah. If you don't get there, we're going to have a problem. 
And I would say most people who work with me probably think, yeah, I can agree with with you on that, and yeah. that that's how I am. You know, I don't care what your process is as long as you get there and bring stuff to the table. But I find it easier to stay in that character yeah. to a greater or lesser degree, um, often greater, just because it's then there's no acting. You know, I, I'm a fan of no acting. You know, yeah. let's just react. You know, let's just be. If, if if I can be so bold as to call it that. Easier said than done, but then everything is easier said than done. That, that's it, yeah. But, uh, but that's where I was trained, that's what I believe in, um, and that's what I find most fruitful in terms of creating a character because, you know, the business of creating human beings is, uh, is difficult. Yeah, you know? it is, it, yeah. yeah, you're playing someone else's life in, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. and, 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 and to they... convince you that I am that yeah. person when I'm not, whether or not you know me or not, um, is a challenge, and that's why it's great. And it's, for me, it's the ultimate art form. Um, and it's something I enjoy yeah. immensely, you know, but it's, uh, but yes, getting you guys as well as myself to suspend my disbelief yeah. is a challenge. You know, if I don't believe myself, how can I expect you to believe me? Yeah, so exactly. yeah. the way I do that is completely immersing myself in, yeah. in the world and, you know, yeah, living truthfully within imaginary circumstances, as the great Stanislavski would say. Yeah. Nice. So... How did you find the training part of the Musketeers, like the horse play, so, the, the horse riding, shall I say, sword play? Love it. Yeah. Um, like I say, it, it, when you're riding a horse, you're not acting. Uh, yeah. Generally, if you are in those moments, you fall off, uh, yeah. which is what Luke Pasqu Pasqualino <laughs> did a lot. <laughs> but anyway, he's not here to defend himself. I shouldn't say that. But um, yeah. Uh, but no, so it's, yeah, it's one of those things where it's... Um, Anything that allows you, like I said, to suspend your disbelief and yeah. to immerse yourself in that world is, is, is helpful, you know. I mean, on the Musketeers, uh, particularly, you know, seasons two and three, I mean, we had uh, some great people yeah. working on that show and the crew. And one of them, uh, Mr. Dave Arrowsmith, who was our production designer, he, what he created in terms of just, you know, the walls and, you know, the set, you would never believe how how real it was and it just you know in those moments Howard Charles was nowhere to be seen it was Porthos Duvalon yeah 17th century SAS soldier <laughs> um, in that world you know and um, I think I even put my I put my hand through a wall once because I was practicing hitting a wall uh. so I don't know I was just probably psyching myself up for a scene but it wasn't a real wall my hand went through and I was like oh <laughs> and I was like I'm so sorry I had no idea how much damage I had, you know the cost or whatever but he was like, it's fine. It was a, you know, a testament to how, how, yeah. how authentic his work was. So, yeah. But it's, you know, you can't beat that. You know, when you're on a horse and you're in all the gear and you've got the weight and the heat, you know, there is no acting. And as I've already yeah. stated, I, I, I'm a fan of, you know, doing as little yeah. acting as possible. Um, that, that's generally the, the secret, uh, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so you touched on Luke as well, uh, and a bit Mr. of Mr. Like Pasqualino, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what was, what was a day like on set? So obviously... Uh, well, very early start. Yeah. Um, uh, they say the early bird catches the worm. Yeah, uh, definitely. Sometimes the, worm, the worms weren't even awake, but you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so um, very early start, traveling to set, uh, usually 15 minute breakfast of some kind. I used to just prepare my own porridge and eat it in the car. Yeah. Or, or, or the eggs. I used to piss everyone off by... Uh, eating eggs in the car in the morning. So obviously, you know, <laughs> I'd get in the car, you got Tom Burke, who's sort of, you know, half awake, and I'd go, morning, fellas, how you doing, you know, already there as Porthos, you yeah. know, and I'm open up this, like, uh, <laughs> this Tupperware dish, and of course, eggs, you know, eggs are great, but they don't smell no, great. They don't know, no, And no. so literally, <laughs> even though no one would say it, you could hear their thoughts of like, this mother, you know what I mean? So, um, and, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. That's you it, know? man. So um, I, I would generally do that. Um, Get to set, uh, sit in the makeup chair for about 45 minutes, uh, getting the famous scar put on, um, and then straight into uh, to filming, you know, and then uh, finishing around, I don't know, six, seven o'clock, back uh, to Prague, takes about an hour, and then um, go to the gym, uh, and then really finish my day around 10, 11 o'clock, and then do a bit of work on the next day, so probably get into bed around midnight, one o'clock, Wow. But then up in like sort of four or five hours. So, yeah. Yeah. No rest for the wicked, as no, they it's say. Not, no, you know, Straight yeah. on with it. So, yeah. Do you, what do you feel was 
Porthos's highlight in the Musketeers? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, the highlight. Mm, it's hard to say. Um, you know, obviously, I, I finished filming, you know, Musketeers well over a, a year ago and stuff now. So um, it's it's one of those things where, with hindsight, you kind of think, actually, yeah, this was great, or you think, oh, this wasn't so great, and. I'm not sure what the highlight was, to be honest. It's like nothing goes boom and comes out. I just think that yeah. the fact that, you know, the story was told and that, you know, we paid homage to Alexandre Dumas. You know, we had a mixed race actor in one of the lead roles. Um, and also uh, the fact that, you know, at points I was afforded and allowed to actually tell a certain side of, you know, yeah. the story and, and go to any sort of depth with that character on British television, I think... I think it's a great thing, you know, yeah. and, and a start of one of things to come because the Americans are so much further ahead yeah. in that sense, you know, with character development. I don't know if anyone's seen The Night Of with Riz Ahmed, no. you know, but it's fantastic, you know, and, it, and it's all about depth. It's all about character. So I would say the highlight were the real character moments, you know, yeah. uh, moments like the moment with Treville, you know, when, when I took off my pauldron and I gave it to him because you know, I felt like he'd maybe uh, made me a musketeer just yeah. because... You know, he had to because of all the stuff going on with my father um, and that I hadn't deserved it. Moments like that, moments of real genuine emotion where it comes yeah. to the surface and you're seeing the inner life of this character rather than just the mask I put onto the world. And, you know, I played Porthos in a, a, as an extremely sensitive individual on the, yeah. on, on the inside, you know, um, protected. It's, it's like a little boy that's kind of worked, you know, I, I was an orphan, you know, the way I grew up. I lost my mother when I was younger, so I, I've created this world around me. I put armor, metaphorically and yeah. literally, on top of me. Hello, little hair there. Just um, being attacked. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, but, but it's all to protect. And, you know, I recognize the fact that there are people in the world um, that can't protect themselves. And so I make it my, if you like, life's work yeah. to protect the Parisians that are not in, in a position, rather, to protect themselves. Um, and I try to tell that story in every single way, with every line yeah. in some way. And sometimes I was allowed to, and some, most of the time I wasn't, but you know, um, I, I fought uh, constantly to do that. And so the highlights of the moments, whether or not you recognize them or not, um, the highlights for me of that character are the moments where I managed to express that uh, through all the challenges and through all the um, red tape that was put around yeah. me most of the time with that character. Um, the moments where I really managed to, to express that are the, uh, are the ones where, for me, stand out and, you know, stuff with Alice, um, all the ladies really, um, you know, Flea, yeah. um, and of course, you know, my, uh, my wife-to-be in the <laughs> last one. Um, all those moments really, uh, the ones that come through and ring true and leak out are the ones uh, for me that they're, they're my favorite and and they're the ones that I think you know you see the you see what makes this person tick I don't yeah. know how yeah. how do you guys feel I mean are those the ones <laughs> or you know I, I didn't get to kiss anyone as much as someone like no. Luke did you know he was kissing <laughs> constantly every five it's minutes it's that smoldering Jesus. look with Luke ain't it, it just has so, to sometimes show up. I was like come on Matt. like I had a great <laughs> moment that was cut for that kiss yeah, there was one kiss that was like, I think it was like 30 seconds. What? And I was like, damn. It was a good kiss, though, I've got to say. It was, uh, those, those guys can kiss. Yeah, <laughs> you know, hey, if it works, it works, right? So we're going to end, but I've got one more question. Yeah. Um, we're going to end already? Yeah. Oh, okay. Dude, I could, I'm literally immersed. Like, you see me, I'm just like. I could like, do this all day. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm proper yeah. immersed. It's, um, yeah. You've moved to LA. Yeah. What is the future for you? What, what is in the pipeline for Howard Charles? Much. And you can't say nothing, can you? Listen, can you say anything? There are non-disclosure agreements. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> listen, as much as I want to say things, uh, uh, legally, I'm, I'm not allowed. Uh, the one thing I will say is, um, I don't want to say something as crash as watch, uh, crass rather as watch yeah, this yeah. space, but uh, the future is bright. On that note, Howard Charles, <laughs> an amazing conversation. Thank Bless you very you, much you. to come in, for coming on this stage Thanks and being, being here so gracious, today. Man, a yeah. round of applause, Howard Thank Charles. You, much Thank love. you very much. Cheers. No problem, man. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There'll be more interviews like this throughout the rest Lovely. of the day. Um, Howard, thank you, sir. Bless you. Blessed. Bless Thank you. you. Cheers. Thank you, everyone. Howard. <laughs>